Welcome back. As Edo State gubernatorial elections draw near, two groups have staged a protest in support and against Adams of Shomale, All Progressive Congress APC chairman. The pro Shomale accused Godwin Obasaki, the state governor, of biting the fingers that fed him in his desperate bid to walk his way into power for the second time and warned Governor Obasaki to desist from harassing the national chairman. And the anti Oshomale group, however, insisted that Oshomale is not too big to face the law. The Edo government instituted civil and criminal actions against Oshomale over alleged funds misappropriation. And joining us to discuss this is Henry Idahabong, former general and commissioner for justice, Edo State, via phone. And also we have Anselm Ojezwa, Edo APC chairman, also via phone. And we have political analyst Najib Bello. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining on the show tonight. Uh, thank you for having me, Ben. All right. The group accused... Yeah, and thanks for having me, too. You're welcome on the show. Thank you very much. Now, the yeah, group accused you. Godwin Abasaki, the state governor of biting the fingers that fed him in his desperate beat to walk his way into power for the second time. Do you share the same opinion, or do you have a different perspective on this issue? Let me go with you, Najib, first. Okay. Um, I think I think the governor has performed fairly well, aside from the issues he has had within his party. But I think in terms of performance, he has not done badly and probably deserves a second chance, at least to contest within his party. I believe he deserves that chance. And Mr. Dahagwan, so, how do you respond to this, Mr. Dahagwan? Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Hello? I can hear you. Go ahead. Well, um, I heard you during your introduction. Uh, you said the state government has instituted criminal and civil actions against Oshomole. Let me say that I am not aware of any such action being instituted. What I know is that the Commission of Inquiry recommended civil and criminal action to be instituted. I, and I make bold to say here that we are not afraid of any criminal or civil action being instituted. The issue of uh, the procurement of medical equipment for the five-star central hospital in Benin City was done in accordance to law. It was not a decision taken by Oshomole as governor. It was a, a decision taken by the state executive council. And the, the governor now, as chairman of the economic team, was a member of the state executive council. He was present on the day decision was taken, and he made contributions to the, the, to the deliberations of the day. The issue here is not that funds are missing. The issue here is not that the equipment were not supplied, because we have in our possession a certificate of goods completion which is dated 12th of September 2018, when Governor Obaseki was already governor, which is an acknowledgement of the supply of the equipment for which 75% of the funds were released to the contractor. So no civil action, no criminal action, to the best of my knowledge, but let it be known that we are not afraid of any criminal or civil action. If the state government has any, they should please bring it on. All right, now the pro Shomale group decried the insecurity in Edo, declaring that Obasaki's government had failed to rise to the responsibility of protecting of lives and properties of the residents of the state. What, in your opinion, are the effects of the feud and events of this sort on the performance of Governor Obasaki in governing Edo State? Is that question for me? Yes, please. As you read the performance of Governor Obaseki as Governor of Edo State. In the, light, in the light of what is being said against him, the pro, the pro Shomale group. I am a non apologetic pro Shomale group. And I believe that the, if I'm to rate the governor by way of performance in all the various indices, in the economic sector, infrastructure, education, in the health sector, with all due respect, and I say this with a sense of responsibility, the performance has been mediocre. Mm. If you go through all the roads constructed during the Somali regime, the roads have standard uh, drainages. They had walkways. They have street lights. They have traffic lights. I'd like to ask the people in government now to tell us one road that has been done in Benin since this governor got into office that had drainage, 
that has a, a street light, that has walkway, that has traffic light. Not one traffic light has been installed since Oshomo left office. Now, so Jupiter, do, do you part. agree with me, Sir Idahagbon, on this? Um, Benny? Yes, please. Um, I would like us to take a step back and talk about the hospital itself because um, the other man had spoken about the hospital. There is a certificate for procurement, and that does not translate into equipment inside the hospital. There's no equipment in the hospital, whether there is a certificate or not. And what the judicial inquiry is saying is they are suggesting prosecution of all those that had any hand to do. First and foremost, the procedure for award of contract does not allow for you to give 75% payment up front. 75% payment was given to the company, Vamed Engineering, to supply equipment. And even up to the day Buhari came to launch that hospital, that equipment was not there. They had to bring in equipment from Tel Basanjo Hospital to come and prop up the place for Basanjo to launch it. So I just wanted to us to put that aside to be sure of what is happening with the indictment. Whether Oshomole had anything to do with it or not, we don't know, but payments were made the way they were not supposed to be made. The state, according to the state procurement law, 25% up for the maximum they can give. They gave 75%. Now, even if the equipment were supplied, we would have said, okay, they did well, despite some infractions. But the equipment is not there to be found. Now, I am not a supporter of Obaseki. He has not done wonderfully well. I will not come and say that the man is doing wonderful. But he has done above average. What is exposing this hospital issue now is we have a situation of COVID-19. And this is one of the places you expect that government will use to treat people with, with coronavirus, or to put people in isolation centers or anything. And there is nothing. It can't do anything there because there's no equipment. The Oba knows this. The Oba has spoken on this issue of an empty hospital before. All right. So let's be careful. Let's All right, Najib, just let me, let me interject in, Najib, and let me go to Anslem. Anslem, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, I'll, I'll need your reaction to everything that's been said so far and your own submission in the light of the ongoing feud between the Gov Governor Basaki and the APC National Chairman, Adam Toshomale. Well, you know that uh, all along, uh, government has been very silent on the issue of the hospital. Until somebody sponsored a documentary indicating that the government, government does not want to open the place due to malice. This was the reason why the governor now said, all right, let us even find out what, what is responsible. And that is what led to the probe. And I think somebody is being economical with the truth when he says that uh, they are not afraid. If they are not afraid, why are we hearing on the internet that uh, Oshomole is going to court to try and stop the government from inquiring into that contract? Secondly, the document he is referring to, talking about uh, supply in 2018 for a contract that was awarded maybe in 2016 or 2015. Did they have two years to supply those equipment? It's not construction now, it's supply. Usually it's about 60 days to 90 days. Why is it taking two years? The story we are told is that that money was paid to an individual and that person went and put the money into a fixed deposit account and during the period the naira took a beating and it was impossible for them to uh, to execute the contract so why are they not telling us the truth and like the gentleman said quite correctly the law there's a public procurement law in Edo state which forbids the payment of, uh, for any contract above 25% advance. This one, they pay 75%. That already is an infraction of the law. But if they have anything to say, let them, why don't they allow the process to take its course? 
So no. that's the position I hold. Okay, Mr. Anselm. As for, as for construction of roads and everything, there is no single word in a two state, and there are 192 words <laughs> in which Obaseke has not constructed a road. <laughs> Maybe so Mr. Hagman, do, do, we should yeah. mention one road. <laughs> I can tell you a hyphen road has all those furniture that he referred to. There is the road from Miriri to that came out of Sapler Road. They have all these things. So for him to come and start looking at the basically, and in any case, the problem they have continuously complained about a basically over one year is not performance. They say he is not sharing money for them. That they made him governor and therefore he should patronize them with the public funds. And the man says no. Every citizen of Edo State, every responsible citizen of Edo State, they know what the issues are. Mm -hmm. So for them to come and start to manipulate things, uh, Mr. Anselm, just hold, hold your thoughts there. I, I, okay. we, we need to wrap. Uh, you know, let me Mr. say Anselm, one more thing. We, we need to wrap the show up now. For I need to go back to Mr. Dahagbon. Mr. Dahagbon, are you there? I am here. Let I, me quickly say. I need your quick reaction say, now, Mr. Dahagbon. I just want to say that all roads in 192 words have been constructed. It's a fallacy and it's an unfortunate statement. It that somebody is asking the governor to share money, or plus that can be correct. People like Kamal Aslemo Jezua, who is jobless, and is a contractor. Many of us on the jobless side, we have jobs. Aslemo Jezua is a lawyer, he doesn't have a law office. He's a contractor, as he speaks. He has over 100 contracts of uh, school innovation. So that's not <laughs> correct. And then, as to the procurement law, hey. Section 37 of the procurement law allows the payment of more than 25%. I refer you to it. If you have not seen it before, go and see it. There are two conditions to be fulfilled there. And if those two conditions are fulfilled, you can pay more than 25%. So, to say that all the 92 words, I am from Ward 1 in the local government area. I challenge you, you are on air now. I didn't want us to go this route. You are the one provoking this. I challenge you, Ward 1 in Ewotubu, Ego. Mention one road that has been done. No, you so don't go to public television and dispute the people that want to know what road. that the Obaseki has constructed. In Ward 1, to the Goluko government, you don't want to know what that was. All right, gentlemen, gentlemen, can I, can I interject now, Mr. Barista Harry? Yes. Barista Harry, Mr. Aslam, now the, 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 there's, there's an election in view. Now, I'm just concerned, I mean, for, for the people of Edo State, what yeah. could be the end or how do we resolve this feud similarly between Obaseki and... Um, APC chairman, national chairman, Adam Soshomene, right. do we see an end in view for the sake of the good view. people of those states? We all belong to the same party. Mm. It is Aslemo Jezua who didn't know how to use his office as chairman to cause reconciliation. But I can assure you that before the election, there will be reconciliation. We are all brothers. We may quarrel. We may agree to disagree. We disagree to agree. We will resolve our differences before the election. And we will confront your position, and by the grace of God, we will come out victorious. All right, Mr. Anselm, what about you? Do you see an I end, am, an end in view? I am very, very happy with the statement he has made. I, I, have hope, he, made the I hope he believes it, because Edo was peaceful until Idaho and his co travelers went and formed a parallel uh, uh, <laughs> uh, by the name EPM. We fought this because you were busy drinking anything. Instead of attending to party matters, I'm happy that we, we, we were busy drinking. Mr. Dagbon, let, let him land. Mr. Dagbon, Mr. Mr. Dagbon. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to, uh, rep me. All right. You have made, you have said you are for reconciliation. I say I'm happy. If those who brought the trouble carry their trouble back to their homes, then everything is fine. Um, there happy. was trouble because instead of you to attend to problems with the party, you were busy perpetuating and uh, limiting. There is that no is way Obaseki will put the job. public money into private pockets. That right. will not happen. All right, Mr. Aslam Ojezwa. You are the jobless person. You are the one living on the state government contract. You I'm not I jobless. You are right. yes, you, you, you never have a Mr. Aslam, gentlemen. Jobless. Gentlemen, Mr. Anselm, Anselm Ojezwa, Edo APC you chairman, I want to say uh, thank you for your talk. time on the show. Thank you for joining us. And we're still going to come with you. You're going to come on the show very, very soon. So please do stay with us. And also, Mr. Yeah. Henry, Barrister Henry Dahagbon, thank you very much for joining on the show thank and you, for your contribution. You God bless you. And Najib Bello, thank you for joining, Najib.
Thank you very much, Ben. I couldn't say much because of the commotion, but yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. It is not a riot scene. It is 3 p.m., the close of a market in an area of Lagos, the Sakatinibu Market, Victoria Island, Lagos, as the economy opens in the city. Time is 2.19. We'll show that plaza very soon. The time is 2.19. It's week three since the COVID-19 lockdown gradually became eased. This is what some Nigerian markets now look like. No hand washing, no entry. I got wash your hand. I got wash your hands. What we are doing here, because we as a union, as a group of people, we have crowd coming in here. If you are, if you if you stay here for the next five minutes, you see make around announcement about customers, buy and go. So customers prefer to come and buy and stay and maybe look around. But it's our time we need to congest. We close shop before three o'clock. Before three or three sharp, you won't see anybody here again. And once we close, everybody leave the vicinity. We don't need to see anybody around this place. Half of the people that are making sales here, we have to push them away. Some will come on Wednesday, some will come on Friday, some will come on Monday. Not everybody that comes today that will come on Wednesday. Within the week, traders take turns to come to the market. Across boards, the general complaint is that of low sales. Market no day, even though if we come out, the day will come out, three o'clock, they ask us to close. So we just demand the share. The business has not been moving in as much as the dollar is increasing. So even this one we are selling now, we are just selling. We don't know how much we are going to buy next time, from 350 to 455. So we are just trying to sell something to at least so that we can be eating. And buyers too are not left out. They too share their predicaments. We are still not safe. You know, so we have to continue to practice, you know, social distancing. We're trying our best to do as we've been instructed by the government to use the face masks, to wash our hands um, regularly, and also to use um, the hand sanitizers. As COVID 19 reaches, community spread with almost 6,000 Nigerians down with the virus. The call is for everyone to take personal hygiene more seriously. From Lagos, Nigeria, Mary Chinda reporting for Plus TV Africa. Here is my take. Although Nigeria's caseload still lags behind several other countries, our large population and relatively high degree of mobility and urbanization, 50%, places us at an increased risk for high transmission. Therefore, the consideration of ease of restriction has to balance lives and livelihoods, and the slow and gradually phased approach should be science and data-driven and devoid of any sentiment or call by the opposition. In spite of the modest progress made, in my opinion, I think Nigeria is still not ready for a full reopening of its economy. The evident and inevitable conclusion now is that the fight against COVID-19 might be long-term as the virus is not likely to go away anytime soon, and I subscribe to the gradual easing of lockdown extended by an additional two weeks. This extension can further be underscored by the fact that no vaccine is expected till around the end of 2021. There is also the imperative for the government to refocus its policy on community ownership, intensify the mobilization of individuals, especially the communities, to take ownership of the fight. Nigeria is not where it should be in terms of control, ownership, infrastructure, and change of behavior. We must do more. And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. In the meantime, be safe and be well. <music>